Chapter 1. To begin at the beginning. 4.45pm, May the 5th, 1973. A bright and breezy spring day in Wardley Gateshead. Elizabeth Wraith was pushing her first grandchild, Stephen, along the disused railway tracks and taking in the fresh air. Without warning, the one-year-old started to scream and cry and shake from side to side, his dummy dropping down into the confines of his pushchair. Elizabeth stopped abruptly and put the brake on the chair and tried to comfort her grandson. As she retrieved the dummy and placed it back into Stephen's mouth, he bit her finger with such a force that it startled her, causing her to cry out loud. 340 miles away, Sunderland Football Club had just won the FA Cup final. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a Newcastle United supporter. For anyone who doesn't understand the rivalry between Newcastle United and Sunderland, then let me please enlighten you. The distance between the two northern giants is 10 miles, and the hatred when the two meet in a football match is very real, I can assure you. I don't hate people from Sunderland myself, but there are the minority from both parties that do, and on match day derbies, they grow tenfold. It's well known that I get a lot of real hatred on social media from their fans, especially on the Sunderland forums, but I personally have never hated anybody there. That can't be said for others though. At the end of the day, it's easy to hate someone behind a computer screen. But when people have actually met me in the flesh, and I'm talking about a lot of Sunderland fans here, we've always ended up getting on okay. In my opinion, apart from the match days, there isn't a real hatred between the two cities. And if it happens, it's football related. That hatred really built up in the 1970s and 80s. In that era, the British football hooligan scene was at its peak. Thankfully, it's ebbed away. That is until quite recently when a minority decided to cause trouble. Everybody knows that Sunderland went on to beat us six times in a row and believe me, that was painful to live through. Before they beat us in those games, Sunderland hadn't beaten Newcastle for 30 odd years. So it was a huge achievement for them. After one defeat, there was a mini riot outside of Newcastle Stadium with around 200 people being involved. You may remember it being in the press that one man ended up trying to hit a police horse. That day wasn't good for Newcastle United and it certainly wasn't good for English football with the eyes of Britain looking upon us. Most of them weren't even fans, just drunken bystanders who'd spent the day in the pub and then came to hover around the ground for the frisk. And that's exactly what happened that day. For the record, it's not something I would ever encourage no matter how many times we'd lost. I've never been involved with that. Doesn't mean I don't understand the mentality of the people who do because I've written a book on it. The enemy from the Bender squad to the Gremlins. If you're asking me how much Newcastle United means to me, well, I've missed five home games since 1984. I missed those five, once because of work, a few other times because of illness. Maybe this sounds a bit corny, but I'm black and white as a magpie comes, and sometimes I've taken it too seriously, when in context, there's more important things happening in the world than Newcastle United. I find that we're all like that from Newcastle about our football. Even though I've never won a domestic trophy since 1955, or a European trophy since 1969. Our club is in the heart of the city, and that's the difference between our club and the other 91. You can get off the metro and you're literally five minutes from St James's Park, which is a unique experience. You can then come out of the ground, walk straight into bars and restaurants within 100 metres. Most other grounds are on the outskirts like Middlesbrough's and Manchester City's, which are in the middle of industrial estates, so that's the difference and why it's special. Newcastle is also the biggest city in the North East and much publicised as the party capital. There's no getting away from it, but the city of Newcastle is also a place that breeds tough people. I mean, you just need to see what the women wear in the winter in the big market. The people of Newcastle come from a working class background, and that comes from our proud history of mining and shipbuilding industries. I guess that's why there's an affinity between Geordies, Jocks, Scousers. We're all the same. We're just hard working people who've never had anything handed to us. I'm extremely proud of where I come from, and at times in my life it's been the most important thing. You know, whoever I've met in the world, no matter how many famous people I talk to about my city's heritage, the 
Tame Bridge, and of course Newcastle United. I'm proud that I come from the North East. And when I come back from many trips away and I see the King George V Bridge and the Tame Bridge on me right, I know I'm home. I still get those goosebumps. For the record, I was brought up in Gateshead, which is south of the Tame, but I was actually born in South Shields. So yes, that makes me a sand dancer, not a real Geordie. I had a brief spell in Washington when I was a baby, but we never stopped there longer than a couple of months. I moved briefly to Wardley, then Hewith, where I grew up. Happy times where I made some very good friends. My parents, John and Celia, gave me the perfect start in life. Dad was a mortgage broker, and Mum worked as a nurse at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Gateshead. So I was brought up by very hard working parents. I've got a younger brother who's seven years younger than me. We've always been close. He's a college lecturer these days with his own family, and I'm immensely proud of him. We both got brains, but my little brother stuck at school and did well with his qualifications. I didn't. I didn't like school whatsoever.